Well, these videos are always hard to make. Predictions, what's going on, who's gonna lose money, and is the market about to crash? Well, if we believe the TikTok comments and YouTube comments these days, the market is about to fall off the cliff, and I am a FOMO trying to get everyone to buy a real estate guy, clearly. But that being said, I enjoy doing this, and I enjoy the people that watch the videos. And in today's conversation, I'm gonna talk a lot about what I think the impact of different areas of the market will be. Meaning, for example, what's going to be the impact of interest rates looking into 2024, and how will it impact us? Inflation, and how will that impact real estate? Short-term rental bans coming across the country, particularly in British Columbia, land use and land use designations, and just generally speaking, other fundamentals and how they could have an impact on the overall market Place. So I'll get into the juicy stuff at the end of the video there. But before we do, we'll get into what everybody wants to talk about and know about, which is, of course, interest rates. Let's dig into it. I know you don't love hearing this, but before you move forward, I need you to hit that like button and that subscribe button and the little bell if you can. That would be amazing because that is how we get more eyes to the channel, which helps us to continue to deliver this information. These videos are only going to get better and better and better as we get more feedback from you. So definitely take a minute to post some comments below. Now, 2023 was a wild year. It has been a wild year. It's a wild year. Oh my gosh. And from start to finish, just an absolute roller coaster. But we're not here to recap 2023. We're here to talk a little bit about where things are at in these different subcategories and more importantly as we move forward what will be the likely impact looking forward now we had already a little bit of a precursor into interest rates with the most recent u.s fed announcement that just came out in december of 2023 specifically jerome powell addressed a very intrigued audience discussing the fact that essentially more or less he's put his foot down and that we are no longer likely to see interest rates go up we're basically at the peak and we could see three interest rate decreases over the course of 2024. now since that time we've seen a variety of news articles come out with conflicting information some saying as many as six four, five, and three rate cuts with others saying none at all. But it seems to me that across the board, virtually everyone is suggesting that we're at the peak, at least in the US, as it pertains to overall interest rates. Now, how does that affect us back here in Canada? Well, Tiff Macklem, who doesn't want to lose the spotlight here, basically came out more or less and said, well, what they do down there is what they do down here. We've got our own problems up here. So the question is, what is the impact of interest rates going to be on the housing market in 2024? And while the answer to that question is massive, we're going to have a huge amount of what happens in the real estate market dictated very heavily by what happens in the mortgage and interest rate world. Now, it's not my responsibility to come out here and tell you I know exactly what's going to happen, but I can tell you what's likely to occur if certain things happen. Now, first and foremost, we've already seen multiple signals that the US and the Bank of Canada is at or very, very close to the peak of interest rates with now multiple rate holds and no indication of interest rates going up, plus positive news from the perspective of reducing inflation. We're also seeing unemployment numbers go up across the board. There's really no reason that we see interest rates go up. And so the impact of interest rates not going up is probably more likely than anything else. Positivity in this marketplace, providing a little bit more reason for consumers to get off the fence who have been waiting for a long time to see interest rates stop increasing. Now, with that all being said, as we know, we have a stress test, which was also just recently stated as not going to change. The stress test itself is still in the high sevens and 8% range for those getting an uninsured mortgage and in the six and 7% range for those getting an insured mortgage, which basically means people still can't qualify for a lot more than they could have a month ago. So what's likely to change? Well, Simple consumer sentiment. When people notice that interest rates are staying the same, they'll start to move back into the marketplace. And when some people move back into the marketplace, others will. And we'll start to see an interesting collection of people head back into what's possibly going to be and very likely going to be a hot spring market. Now, on that point, when I say hot spring market, I don't necessarily mean what some people who watch these videos think. I'm not suggesting that things are going to go up a mountain or go up a hill and, and shoot up like a rocket ship like we saw in the end of 2021. But I am going to suggest that this is likely signaling a bottom or in most areas, not all, but in most areas of the real estate market for prices. And if for any properties that are priced well and or highly desirable, there's no reason that they won't sell heading into the spring market as supply continues to be a massive issue. We'll touch more on that later. So for interest rates looking into 2024 in Canada, most projections right now are that we're going to see the first rate cut in April of this year, which would coincide with a very likely to be hot spring market. And if things don't go completely out of whack, we'll likely see a few more rate drops throughout the rest of the year. My overall feedback is that as we continue to deal with many supply issues and more people looking to 
buy real estate and a great transfer of wealth, interest rates will continue to be a massive factor, as we know, with the potential of qualification going up as rates go back down. What can stop that or stall that is exactly what we just talked about. If the market gets too hot, well, the BOC could say, screw it, we're essentially keeping things as is, we're not gonna reduce interest rates, and we could see a lot of pain in that lower to middle class, which follows a similar vein and something that we will be talking about in future videos around how I believe, and this is a theme that is shared out by others, I believe that the middle class and or the lower middle class in Canada and the US is going to eventually be squeezed out over the next decade to two decades of actually owning real estate. And that is a real belief of mine. Moving on, that being said, my overall impact of interest rates moving into 2024, I would say on a scale of 10 is nine out of 10. Interest rates will play a huge role. So we'll wait and see what happens. Tell me what your thoughts are below. Inflation, we touched on it before. Obviously inflation itself, has had a massive impact in most people's lives over the course of 2023. People have basically essentially ignored it throughout the first part of the year, and then all the conversations became about what was the price of everything basically cars, clothing, buying a, a beer, looking at the cost of groceries. It's a nonstop consideration. It's something that people no longer can ignore as they've been draining their bank accounts, trying to keep up with the cost of living. And more importantly, we started to see that impact how people are living their lives in the form of buying patterns and moving patterns with people looking to seek out different opportunities from a lifestyle perspective, moving out to less expensive cities, especially when it comes to housing, like Calgary, for example, which has continued to remain hot in despite of a high interest rate environment. Now inflation throughout 2024 is likely going to continue. It's not going to just fall off a cliff, although it is my belief that they will tame inflation overall and get closer to the overnight target. Now, if you believe most economists, it'll be a little bit of a rough ride from here on out, meaning it won't be necessarily a smooth drop when it comes to seeing inflation be brought back to the goal of the 2% overnight rate. But it is my belief that we will hit that by the end of the year, all things being considered and all things being equal outside of some kind of crazy economic event that happens. And of course, what that means is probably higher unemployment and of course, negative impact to most consumer wallets. But when we get close to that stage, we'll be able to see things settle down. The big question is, does the hand talk to the fist? Does the government start talking to the Bank of Canada and paying attention? I don't have the answer to that, but don't feel ultimately confident they will. So it could be again, a rocky ride back down. Well, let's talk about some other things back close to home. The uh, government's fight against, it uh, seems like the provincial government specifically, and now the federal government's fight against short-term rentals. And what will the impact be on the housing marketplace? Well, it's December of 2023, and we've already seen that with the BC NDP essentially coming out and banning short-term rentals as of May of 2024, there has been a shift in the marketplace with many people putting up their short-term rentals for sale or long-term rental. The interesting thing is that we haven't seen a dramatic impact on rental rates yet. Although in talking to some close to many of the owners and talking to some of the owners, it seems like many of them are still renting out Airbnbs. Will there be a change of heart? Will there be any exceptions? Will the government come to their senses and consider that 90 to 30 day ban? Or is it going to be all hell breaks loose in 2024, I don't know, but we'll wait and see what happens. Looking at the amount of people that we've talked to that have short-term rentals, it seems to me that there should be some exceptions made, at least for those in designated zones, and perhaps it might be a little bit of a fight, but if we get there, it'll probably be a good thing for everyone. I, I don't think that the impact of the short-term ban will be a massive one, although it will be notable, probably a short blip, and then it will be essentially gone. We think that what it will do is essentially for some people to sell their properties to other owners. And of course, more importantly, we'll likely see people take a bath on values that they paid for these short-term rentals in 2022, 21, 20, and perhaps even 2023. I think the impact of the short-term rental change is gonna be most felt in obviously markets like Kelowna, the Okanagan, and of course, Victoria, Vancouver Island. And I think more than anything else, it's just gonna hurt the local economy and fill the buckets for hotels. So be prepared to pay more for a hotel if you're going to those cities in the near future. My impact on short-term rentals, I suspect will be around five out of 10. That's where I'm standing right now. Now, land use designations are really interesting. The government basically came out and said that they've made these zoning changes, which essentially allows them to build three or four units or an accessory dwelling unit on any building that is 280 square meters or greater, three units on anything that is smaller than that, which is going to really mess up some community plans. And I do believe that there will be a little bit of a fight as far as what happens to some of these communities that have been planned for five or 10 years that are all of a sudden going to have massive issues with parking, schools, hospitals, and everything else in between. This is something that will probably not have a massive impact this year. In fact, in fact, I'm suggesting maybe a two or three out of 10, 
But I think in three to five years, you will start to see a notable impact in a lot of communities by changing the way that our communities are actually shaped. And uh, while I do agree that there is an issue with regards to providing proper housing to families, other than just building four-story, three-story, five-story condo buildings, we do definitely need more townhouses and small homes for families that actually need the space. I don't think this is the right approach to be taking it. I think there's a lot of other issues. And in the end, I don't think it's going to have a major impact on real estate this year. However, look down the line for the next couple of years to see what the impact is. So for this year, I'd suggest that's probably maybe a two or a three out of 10 as far as the impact on the marketplace. Now the last one, the real fundamentals, and this is all basically everything in one place, which is what do we think is going to happen when it comes to the primary issues of supply and demand? One of the biggest issues and biggest hot topics and everything that we talked about today is meant to obviously fix some of those issues is supply. We don't have enough of it. We've got, according to most recent reports, another half a million people coming to Canada in the year 2024. And those are the ones that are reported, notwithstanding the ones that have recently showed up and the ones that are going to be coming in the future. We simply do not have enough people to house all these new residents. We don't have enough hospitals. We don't have enough of anything. And so I think supply still continues to be a major issue. And that's why I do believe, despite higher interest rates, that most markets, with the exception of a few that are a little bit inflated, are probably going to continue to deal with issues when it comes to pricing. And I do believe that we have hit a pricing floor among most places. Now, one thing I will say is that looking forward, land value, so actual land value in specifically many cities and municipal areas is the one thing that we will continue to see go up, probably at a relatively dramatic pace over time. I do believe that we will see a little bit of a devaluation of the higher cost condos outside of the major cities and or at least a flatlining for the next couple of years as that is the one thing that is being considered consistently built. Now let's talk about demand. I think we've gone through the stage of time where most people are concerned about interest rates and with interest rates being where they are, you'll find that most people and most families will now have gotten used to interest rates. There's this theory that essentially if someone knows what they could have had, they may not make a decision thinking back on what they could have had. But if they no longer think about a 1% or a 2% interest rate because that's all they've ever known, well then they have nothing to compare it to. So I do believe that demand stays very high. Supply still is not fixed. And ultimately, I don't see a way out of this mess at this time right now. My primary objective and goal looking forward is to find out how to get more people into the market sooner so they can take advantage of what real estate will provide in the next couple of years. I mentioned it earlier in my video. I do believe that the middle class will continue to get squeezed and squeezed and squeezed out of the market. And I still strongly believe that real estate is a path to wealth that most people don't consider. For all those people who are haters out there, my feedback to you would be, do you own real estate? I'd love to know. And if you do, did you have a bad experience? Because that would help us to understand the fears that you might have. If you've been enjoying these videos, you have some questions about the impact of what we talked about today, or you're someone who doesn't believe in anything we've talked about, please don't hesitate. Send us a comment, send us questions, ask us where we got our data. Happy to provide all this information. I'd love to see you on the channel going forward as we continue to build up our base of subscribers. Thank you. We'll see you in the new year.